Hello again, welcome back to Asgard and welcome back to FTB Interactions. So let me go ahead and pop upstairs. Since it is night, it's about to not be night. Um, I have been working on setting up some Astro Sorcery stuff and getting us ready for some stuff. We have a few machines in here. Uh, let me go ahead and get this crafted. I'm hoping that it doesn't turn day. I was wanting to craft two of these. Or I laid out stuff for two of these. Originally, I was thinking, well, I'll make two of them. There's one. Let's see if we can get the other one crafted before the sun comes up. They're fairly cheap to craft. Um, and these are ritual pedestals. We're going to be using these today. I think we'll probably only use one today. Um, at least that's what I foresee. Ah. Of course. Of course. Okay, anyways, <laughs> that's fine, that's fine. Um, but between the episodes, I did, I did go ahead and move all of our astral stuff up here. Um, I think this is where it's going to go. I think I have some ideas for the way I want to lay out um, kind of the third floor, sort of. It's going to be partially outdoor, and there are going to be uh, some sections up here that rise up. And before too long, we're going to have creative flight. Now, technically... Technically, from this quest, we're going to get a tuned rock crystal, um, as well as a lens. We're going to go ahead and take those, because we're going to be using those today. Oh, there we go. We're going to be using these today um, for some of the stuff that we're going to be working on. Um, but I did go ahead and make a Lucerna Constellation paper. Um, this is actually part of the, the cheaper craft ones. Um, so I did go ahead and make one of these. And I discovered the constellation in the sky with our telescope. Um, so we do have access to that. We're going to be doing some attunement because Lucerna is the one that we need for um, kind of the mob prevention ritual. And that's what I'd like to get up and going. Uh, that's one of the things I'd like to get up and going today. Um, now over here, I tried to mimic this um, so it would look a bit better from, you know, down there. Um, our Starlight Infuser. And over here I set up... Uh, this right here now technically you could cut off everything above like the marble pillars and up you don't have to have all of this but this is going to be for our teleportation our celestial gateway uh, is what's going to go up here so um <clears throat> and i did go ahead and get some machines together i automated some more things and we're going to be doing a few different things today because really to go into space there's a couple things that we need to do uh, first up, we want to get our mob prevention ritual up and going so that we don't have to worry about mobs spawning around our base so we don't have to worry about T-Rexes. Um, we also need to get our Celestial Gateway, um, get this set up, and then lastly, we need to get our fuel um, created. And so that's what we're going to be doing today is bouncing between fuel and astral sorcery. Um, of course, astral sorcery when it's night and fuel during the day. So anyways, to actually get this up and going, we are going to need to get um, Cryothium and Pyrothium. And the way that we're going to go about doing that, um, we can craft that stuff fairly easily. But I got to looking, and the Primal Chicken is definitely within our wheelhouse. Infinity Reagent, I went ahead and crafted this. This is just Covalence Dust, Obsidian Dust, Graphite, and Liquid Nightmares. It has to be an HV Mixer, not a problem for us. Um, you can also craft it here, but it's a little bit more expensive there. The smart chicken, of course, not an issue. Um, the infused ender pearl. This is just going to be an ender pearl and dimensional shards, which I don't know how many of those we have at the moment. No, we are good on these. So let me just go ahead. I was thinking that I had enough, but I forgot to check. Let me just go ahead and grab eight of those and put away some of our uh, astral stuff for right now. And so we're going to let's grab a fluid extractor and an assembling machine here. And to pull this off, it's only going to be 144 millibuckets. Okay, so we'll go ahead and put our fluid extractor right there. This, is, of course, is just temporary. Um, I'm sure that we will end up automating some, you know, some liquid glowstone and stuff like that down the road. Um, but for right now, this will be fine because I don't know how extensively we're going to be using this. And let me set this to auto output the fluid. There we go. There's our infused ender pearl. Right now, I just need one of these, so... And then we're also going to need, we'll get to the blue vitriol water solution in just a second. Um, we're also going to need the mana dust. Now this is going to be unstable mana. Um, oh, I need two of these. 
I think I have enough though. Um, we're gonna have to make pyrothium, cryothium, aerothium, and petrothium, and all of these are just crafted in the mixer. And to get our like our petrothium and aerothium, it's just gonna be done through the chemical bath with XP. And I know we have um, the blizz powder came from a quest. I don't remember which quest, but we did get some blizz powder from a quest. So let me grab that. And it looks like I've got one piece of nitor. Um, but to get more of this, looks like it's going to be nitric acid with potassium dust. The nitric acid, let me get this crafted up. Just um, nitrogen dioxide, two oxygen, and nitrogen to get that out. This is all going to make enough nitric acid that one crafted this will be fine. Get that running. Um, and since it's night, let's go ahead and pop up. And the Celestial Gateway, what's it take? It takes a little bit of stuff. I'll get this stuff together in just a minute. Um, and I'll craft that the next night. Let me go ahead and grab that Lucerna page. And we'll get the rest of this laid out. Because we're going to have to attune our crystal. Is our ritual not up tonight? May not be. Oh, it's doing that thing where there's no... Okay. Like, there's no stars out tonight, so we're going to have to wait anyways. Okay, well, we'll continue working on our fuel. Working towards our fuel. This We don't necessarily have to do this step, uh, this step. But it's just going to make our lives a bit easier as far as starting to move into cryothium and things. Um, so let's just, we'll move this over. All three buckets and our water buckets. And nitric acid is going to be program circuit three for that. So there we go. Boom, so we're going to get nitric oxide and two buckets worth of nitric acid. Okay, so let me just take that, throw that back in there. Alright, so now that we've got that, we can run this with potassium. Uh, just a little bit is going to get us our nitro dust. Okay, I don't have any potassium in the system. I've probably got some down here. This may be something that we end up wanting to automate, though. We'll see. Um, I do not have potassium down here either, but we can get it by electrolyzing like rock salt, saltpeter, enderpearls. But let me just grab, um, let me see here, four of this. It's five saltpeter per potassium. I don't have a spare electrolyzer, so let's just go ahead and order one of those. Um, I did get a question, well, I got a, a question from a few people about why I don't use the the quote-unquote cheaper circuits for, like, the basic circuits. Because at the moment I'm still using the basic electronic circuit, which is this recipe here, when we could be using the advanced circuit parts. The reason being, it's not really cheaper. Uh, not really, in the grand scheme of things. It does craft four at a time, but it takes about four times the amount of materials, so... You save on, like, per craft, because um, it's only 10 seconds here, and it's 10 seconds um, ten seconds here. But, honestly, I don't use these that much, and I'm not going to update all my recipes for this, um, when the cost difference is not very much cheaper than this. Um, you save on a little bit of fine copper wire, but you replace it with things like plastic circuit boards, um, phenolic circuit boards, of course, we've already got that. It's just really not, it's not worth it to me in all honesty. Not until we get to the point where we can, um, not until we get to the point where we do this method. Whenever we get up to the point where we can do this method, I will be updating uh, to advanced circuit parts, but until we get to this point, it's not really cheaper. And to get the system on chips, um, it is going to require that we have Naquita doped wafers, uh, which is going to require that we get up to EV. Um, before we can do that but I'm not going to it's just to me it's just a waste of time um, because there's just not enough it's like it saves you like a half a copper I think or something it's not much 
It's very, very minimal. Um, it does save you on time, but it's on a circuit that I barely ever use anyways. Um, so that's the reason that I'm not updating those. At least for now, until we get up to EV. Once we get up to Naquita, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely change it over. Um, because at that point, of course, you're only using one, uh, you know, one bit of a wafer. <laughs> one little bit of a wafer, because, you know, they multiply so much. Um, you're only using one little bit of a wafer to make four circuits, but uh, this is basically just four times the materials that that takes. So it's really just a time in, uh, speed increase. Okay, so this should be done. It's probably done long ago. So we'll just set this up. We'll use it for this one thing and then we'll put it away for now. But we'll electrolyze that. I don't really care about the oxygen and nitrogen. Uh, oxygen and nitrogen because we have infinite of that stuff so I'm just gonna I'm gonna waste it but I just want the potassium um, technically I only need two because I do have a piece of nitor in the system I don't know where it came from but we do have one um, I have not a clue I'm just gonna set that electrolyzer there so I don't forget that we do have it though um, and then let's grab yeah I ordered a tank let me grab the nitric acid that's in here and this is going to be done in the chemical bath. So we'll just go ahead, that, that, and let that run. Runs fairly quickly. So there is our two pieces of nitre. Okay. And let me go ahead and just bucket out this nitric oxide. For right now we probably will end up automating that though uh, long term that night or because I think we're going to be using it uh, for a bit as we progress okay so we've got our two night or um, our obsidian let me just go ahead macerate that out there's our two obsidian dust then we'll turn back to the primal chicken so we're going to make this through the chemical bath with um, liquid experience which is supplied to the system so if we do I don't know that we'll need to automate this but in particular because if we go ahead and push on for the primal chicken it's it's surprisingly cheap I thought it was gonna be more expensive than that uh, but there's our two blitz powder and there is our two basals powder okay so now um, to actually turn them into a dust form um, we are going to need a mixer for this and a bit of, I think it's brine for all of these. Yeah, so basically two buckets of brine for this. Okay, so we'll go ahead and put that in there and then, uh, let's see, the pyrothium is going to be sulfur and redstone. Okay, so there's that. Oh yeah. Um, for the cryothium, it's snowball and redstone. For the aerothium, it's saltpeter and redstone. And for the petrothium, it's obsidian dust and redstone. Okay, so we'll go ahead, we'll toss that in, that in. There's the cryothium. There is the aerothium. And then we just have to get the obsidian dust. And we got a quest complete elemental dusts. There is that. So there's our four different elemental dusts. And actually getting the Elemental Dust quest is going to unlock, yeah, this pathway here. But we'll get to the Cryothium in just a moment. Okay, so now what we're going to have to do is create the, uh, the Primal Dust, which is all of these, or create the Mana Dust. And then we're going to need 5,000 millibuckets of Unstable Mana uh, for each one. Okay, and I just noticed... Um, this is active. I was getting some stuff together for the Celestial Gateway. We're just going to take one of these. And toss it on there. Let that attune. I'm not going to worry about growing it right now. Not until we get into the Celestial Crystals. It's just not worth it to me. And I think... Um, I remember these things being overly powerful. Um, as is. So... Yeah. I think it's going to cover our base. It's only a 5x5 five five area really. Okay. So that's done. We'll grab that, and we have a tuned rock crystal to Lucerna. And we're just going to right click and get our Celestial Gateway crafted out. Um, this is all really, really cheap stuff that we had on hand. 
Uh, Mana Pearls, I think, probably the most involved. You know, we covered those a while back and we crafted a few spares, so that wasn't an issue. Okay, so that's done. Bam me up, Scotty. We're going to get another Celestial Gateway, some Sooty Marble, and some Marble. And that is, of course, to basically build another one of these. We'll have a lot of Sooty Marble left over. But our Celestial Gateway, once again, this is the multi-block. Um, just cut off the marble pillars and up because this isn't required. But we'll put that on there and that way we can uh, we can teleport. Um, it looks like the space stations are saved. I'm guessing. Unless data for this is saved within the... I don't know. I deleted the save files for all the other dimensions, but I don't know if Astral... Astral, I know, has some things that are saved in its own like files, its own astral files, so um, those might be saved from there, I'm not for sure, but uh, we did get our tune rock crystal so we can set up our ritual uh, with that. It just requires that we have a Lucerna. Of course having better stats on this is going to make it better, but uh, that's going to be fine for our needs I think. Okay so let me go grab our unstable mana and we are going to get this um, go back to the primal chicken there's still a few more things that we're going to need for this guy um, for our mana dust that's just gonna be in the mixer so we'll just toss in that unstable mana get that crafted out real quick it's gonna be most of our unstable mana this is something that we do need to get automated here pretty quick I think um, we had a bit of it left over from um, a while back but um, we are gonna need to uh, to get that stuff crafted out so or get that stuff automated. All right, so there's our mana dust. Now we just need the blue vitriol water solution. Now there is a chicken that we can make. We can also make this, uh, well, that's gonna require it. Um, but there is a chicken that we can make for this, but this chicken only comes from dungeons, Eucalides, something like that. Um, but we can craft this with lead zinc solution, sulfuric acid, one millibucket, uh, binding reagent, and this is gonna give us 500 each. So that will be fine. Um, any kind of eggs, we've got those. The binding reagent is infinity reagent is going to be the cheaper method for us because we are going to have to do the wheel stuff. But it's really overdue that we do that anyways. So let me just get a chest here. Okay, we had a logistics pipe crash, um, but luckily it only took me to the title screen. It wasn't like a bad crash or anything. But yeah, let's go ahead and dive into um, let's dive into a little bit of blood magic. This shouldn't take too long. Um, we are going to need mana steel plates. We're going to need a block of demon metal, and yeah, this is all really really easy actually. So go ahead and give me that. Okay, so there's the Hellfire Forge done. Needed to get this stuff underway anyway, so. And we get a Petty Tartar Gem from that. So that's good. Um, now the Sentient Sword is just gonna be an Iron Sword and a Petty Tartaric. Petty Tartaric being Redstone Gold. Um, any kind of blue dye, we're just gonna use Lapis probably. Redstone Gold, Lapis, and Glass. And it just so happens that is all on this first screen here. We have lots of all these things, so that's fine. Okay, so that stuff, that, and then we are going to need the iron sword. So there is that. Toss that in there, that in there. We'll get our sentient sword. There we go. And then to get the lesser tartaric okay so we'll go ahead and get that crafted up get this compressed that compressed toss that in that stuff in and we'll get this upgraded and of course we're going to run two of these simultaneously we'll have um we'll get this one upgraded pretty quick Shift right click on the lesser to basically empty it out or in from the petty empty it out into this lesser uh, so we can get that crafted and then oh and we get 
Okay, we get a, a field lesser Tartaric, so we'll just grab that. We get some Tomes of Weaponry and XP levels. Um, oh, you know what, though? I'll show you a trick. And this is kind of a bug. I'm just going to show it to you because I have basically infinite XP. I'm not worried about it. But if I've got 73 levels and I take... Because the way that this is done, it's XP levels. Um, and I noticed this a bit back. Because I picked up like one and I happened to have like a hundred on me. But if we take the 60 XP levels, now we have 763 XP levels. Um, which is actually a ton of XP. It's a lot more than just taking a normal 60 levels. But once again, it is kind of a... a like an exploit, so... <laughs> um, depending, I don't know that I would use it. It's just I'm not worried about XP because I've got plenty. I have more than enough to last me for a long, long time. All right, so since we've got that, we can technically just move on with the primal chicken. So that's nice. Um, so the vitriolic solution, we are going to need to make this. It only drains 20. This is an infinity reagent, rose gold, gunpowder, glowstone, rose gold. Um, we're gonna have to do this here. That's gonna be four gold and copper. We'll just toss that in there and get that running. This may be something, probably will end up being something I want to make a recipe for and just automate it uh, through this blast furnace. Now the lead zinc solution is four pieces of aluminum and indium concentrate. Indium concentrate is purified galena, purified sphalerite, and sulfuric acid. That makes 8,000, which is what we need to make. 8,000 millibuckets of this and indium dust okay and this takes EV ah <gasps> oh no oh no it just blew up in my face I did not realize I did not realize <laughs> I saw that and I thought you know I was looking at through this stuff and I was like okay I didn't think about this really taking wheel but I was just quickly looking through the thing. I saw lead zinc solution. I was thinking it was probably just like lead and zinc. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. That's fine. We'll be pushing to EV before too long. So we'll just put that to the side. We'll come back to the primal chicken. I had looked through here and I was like, man, all this is doable in HV and I didn't expect it. Sure enough, it's this. Um that's going to throw the wrench in our plan. Honestly, it might be just as easy to get, to go for the vitriolic chicken then, um, instead, of, <laughs> instead of crafting that out. That's okay, derps will happen, it's Greg Tech. Um, it's not a big deal, and we got into wheel and some things that we were gonna need to get into anyway, so. Um, so we'll just do this this way then. 10,000 oxygen makes cryogenic oxygen, and then the 10,000 hydrogen makes cryogenic hydrogen. Um, both of these just taking cryothium. Um, so we are going to need a bit of this. Um, let me just get... Uh, we have six bla uh, blizz powder. We'll start off with the six, and then we'll see what we get to. Okay, so there's our six cryothium. Alright, so what we're going to do, this is all going to be through the chemical reactor, correct? I need one more fluid supplier, which is fine. Uh, what we're going to do is we are going to automate basically creating fuel and we're going to do it right here. We're going to put a chemical reactor down right there, chemical reactor down right there. We're going to say bottom and we're going to say top. And right here, let's go ahead and put in a fluid supplier that sits right there. Uh, this is going to request oxygen. And we're going to say partial, and we're going to say keep like 30,000, because it's like 10,000 per craft, so may as well. Yeah, that was the right oxygen. So the oxygen is coming up into here. Um, once we get our primal chicken set up, we will automatically feed this with cryothium. Um, but we're going to go ahead and throw that in there. It's going to create our cryogenic oxygen. And it will order some more um, some more oxygen. So grab this. We're going to do the same thing with uh, cryogenic hydrogen. So keep 30,000 in there. And then, let's see. The 
side of this would have, let me just get a fluid provider pipe. And right in here, let me grab this other chemical reactor. This is what we're going to be using right here. This is basically just going to make our fuel for us, uh, is what it's going to do. Okay, we just had like a full crash, <laughs> like a full out crash. Let me order this again. Hopefully it doesn't crash. I don't know. It was whenever I came over to open up the logistics request table, to see if my thing was done, that it crashed. And it's so strange. I've been running fine for hours. Um, and then whenever I start recording, it's like, hey, I'm going to crash a bunch, if you don't mind. All right, so let's put that in there. And then on the back, of course, we will put basically just suppliers uh, that feed these with cryothium. But we'll give it a second. It might be the wrong hydrogen that I have set. Oh, hydrogen's not. I guess I was looking at nitrogen earlier. Okay, so we're going to need to just like electrolyze water for that. Hey, where'd you come from? Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to set up this electrolyzer and we'll set it up in here. I think we've got plenty of room. These rooms are all just going to be basically machine rooms. Um, and what we're going to do, let's do it setting, actually I've got space. Yeah, let's do it setting here. Okay, let's grab that. And we are going to grab this. And we're just going to move it via our fluid transfer node. May want to end up speeding up the water. Uh, system from down there because we're going to be eating through a bit of it. The electrolyzer is going to start breaking that down um, and creating hydrogen and oxygen. And then what we're going to do is put in a conduit that sits right here. I don't want that to connect there. This will be hidden. You won't be able to see this. Um, we'll put our fluid trash can right there. Um, let's grab this. Uh, let me get a fluid filter real quick. I would get the one that goes in the trash can, but I've had some issues with that in the past. So I'm like kind of weary about it or it doesn't actually want to behave correctly. So we're going to be going with the Ender IO ones. Uh, insert. And you can only insert oxygen. So we'll do that. And then we're going to have a tank that sits here. We are going to grab a bucket of that hydrogen. Technically, we could have it feed down, but it would feed down oxygen then, so I don't want to do that. We're going to have the hydrogen go into there. And we're going to say that you're going to be able to extract always active. And you can insert. And we're going to lock that in. So it's going to feed all the hydrogen into this. And then, of course, the oxygen is just going to get trashed. We don't need oxygen. We have infinite oxygen. I'm not that worried about that. Now, let me get another fluid provider pipe real quick. And we'll just put that on right there. There we go. It's going to send the hydrogen over. And it's going to start making cryogenic hydrogen. So, yay, there's that. Okay. So, now what we're going to do, let me grab, let me grab that. I'm going to set that up right there. And then let me grab a bucket of each of these. This is going to complete the quest for us so that we'll actually be able to progress onwards. So there's that. And then we're just going to add these in like that. They're going to start crafting. And we're going to say fluid auto output enabled on both of these. And they're just going to feed their cryogenic fluids into there. And now we have rocket fuel. Okay. So then they want us to get a cell of it. Okay. We can do that. So there is our cell of rocket fuel. And quest complete. And what do we get from... We get 32 cryothium. Okay. And then we'll be able to fuel up our rocket... Um, so I think that's good for right now. Um, as far as our fuel, I mainly just want to get our fuel set up. So we do now have rocket fuel available. Um, 
And it was brought up in the comments, something I had totally forgotten about. This actually needs to be placed into the Void World. So I am going to get this moved over and set up in the Void World in between episodes. I'm actually going to put a Void World portal up here. And that way we'll have easy access to kind of our rocket fueling area uh, from our base. Um, now, one thing I want to do before we end out the episode, though, is set up our Astral Sorcery Ritual. And we'll, we'll use the rest of the stuff. We'll be making primal chickens before you know it. It's going to be pretty quick for us. Actually, I'll tell you what. We'll go ahead and set up both of them. Um, and that way I can kind of do some exterior building. Because that's really what I've been waiting for is creative mode flight for this. Um, so I do, I wouldn't mind doing some exterior work. Maybe between episodes. Probably come out, uh, let's see, that's one, two, three, four. Come out one extra. And then we'll put it here. Okay, and they're on the same Y level, so that's great. Um, and then what we're going to do is we'll put down our ritual pedestal atop that on both sides. And that way, at least for right now, we'll have creative mode flight. I will be changing this over, though, to a different ritual probably before too long. Um, because we won't have use for the creative flight one for very long at all but it will give me a couple episodes where I can kind of get out here and do some work um, before getting to flight because I've been wanting to work on the outside a bit and kind of shape up add the stairs and things like that been wanting to add the stairs until we get mob prevention um, I think this will be a pretty good size but we will probably upgrade it uh, before too long because um, We'll start, we'll start pushing into a bit more Astral Sorcery and get to where we can make Celestial Crystals before too long, so. Okay, so that one is set up now. And then we'll just set this one up real quick. And we'll put uh, this one in. This is the Creative Flight Ritual. And then over here we'll put down our Mob Prevention Ritual. So you can see kind of an effect coming up. There we go. This one's not doing it. I think, though, it's because this tree. There we go. That one's starting to take effect. And you can see that we now have creative mode flight. If we come out, we should have creative mode flight in a pretty large radius. Yeah, we can come out to here. Um, let's see. Where do I get it back? I think it just took a second for it to come off. Yeah, there we go. So we got creative mode flight out to there. Um, I'm not 100% sure the radius that this is going to have at the moment, but I remember it being massive, um, even with just a, like a 400 size. So I think this is honestly going to be big enough for us. Bear in mind that our base is pretty much mob proofed. We do occasionally have spiders come in, of course, on these upper floors, but uh, I'm going to start working on that now that I have creative mode flight and I don't have to worry about zombies. Yeah, it looks like I'll lose it on the back side here, but that's actually not a big deal because where I need to work on is just right around this. I won't be able to come too far back here. Yeah, it looks like right here is where I lose it. Yeah, so <laughs> it basically covers most of our base. I'll be able to fly up and do things out here, though. So um, I could have put it more centered. Um, with the base or put it up here, but I think out front is going to be fine. Um, now, of course, we can redirect the beams to give it a little bit more power. And bear in mind that these will be stronger at night. So at nighttime, I might be able to go out a little bit further uh, from this. Or if I do the beams, redirect the beams to this, that will work also. But uh, the lenses, though, if I recall, the beams don't start coming off of that, though, until we actually start feeding it from like a collector crystal. So we will end up putting some collector crystals off to the side. Actually, I'm thinking we'll probably put them here. Um, so we'll kind of have this sort of like a grand entrance that comes in uh, to this. So, and these will be kind of raised and then walk up the steps to this. So uh, it's kind of what I, what I have in my head. So I'll start working on that. Um, but we will be pushing into Collector Crystals before too long. Probably after, that'll be one of our projects after space, I think. Um, after we push into space, do our space station and go to our first planet. 
so that we can start gathering materials and things. They are getting ready to push into EVA, and then uh, we're going to switch over to magic for a little bit and push a bit harder into magic. So next episode, we will launch into space um, and, you know, maybe get our orbital miner set up so we can start quarrying out uh, these materials, most of which are very useful. Gold, not really for us, since we do already have gold and redstone automated. Um, but we will kind of launch into space, maybe start getting that set up. We'll see where we where we get to. Um, but we'll definitely we'll definitely head into space next episode, I think, because the main thing was just getting some mob protection in place. Um, since it is night, we can have a look around. Oh. I lost my, uh, I think that zombie's been here, um, because he attacked me earlier, but, uh, if we come out, I'm not really seeing, uh, any mobs in the general vicinity. As you could see, I mean, just a basic crystal, just get a decent one with, like, mid-range stats, and it's going to be enough to, uh, I find to, to give you plenty of mob protection. Yeah, there's a creeper out here. You can see there's some mobs out there. So it's going to come out about that far from our base. So a good three or four chunks. Yeah, it's about three chunks diagonal uh, from our from our base. And that is, of course, it's the, here is the farthest possible point uh, from that crystal. So it's going to cover plenty of our base. We're not going to have to worry about that too much. Um, until we upgrade, we may occasionally have a T-Rex that just happens to make his way over. Though it is highly unlikely that we'll see many of them uh, with that crystal set up. So, like I said, it really doesn't take a very strong crystal um, to do everything really that we need it for. So, um, But yeah, so I'm going to end out this episode here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe. If you're not already, stay updated with when new videos come out. And I hope to see you guys next time. So until then, as always, do take care, stay safe, I'll see you guys then.